Executive Report Number One, Environment, Culture and Community Safety, I see. I now call upon Councillor Cook to approve Paragraph 3. Could I also say that I have agreed to a request by Councillor Cook and Councillor Leone Cooper, well actually there's only one Councillor Cooper, this is the one saying, sorry, uh, Councillor Cooper, that they be allowed to address the Council for 10 minutes on this paragraph. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Madam Mayor. I'd like to uh, move paragraph uh, 3. Uh, in relation to the Parks Police. C Councillor Cooper. And I'd like to formally move the amendment. And I second it. Councillor Boswell. Councillor Cook. Do you want me to speak um, and you want to close the debate? Okay, we're in slight disarray, uh, Madam uh, Mayor, yeah. apologies for that, um, because, uh, and it is a shame because there are still quite a number of people in the public gallery who've been waiting to hear this debate. And unfortunately, because we're starting so late in the evening, um, we've now uh, constrained the speakers down to just myself and uh, the Cabinet member, um, which I think is a great shame. Um, and I am actually going to include within my remarks um, some of Councillor Boswell's speech. Um, so uh, I probably won't deliver it as well as she would have done, but nevertheless, I'm going to attempt to do so. Um, some of the things that she would have said if we were having a full debate on this um, relates to looking at the whole of the the bog off offer, buy one, get one free. Um, and it does achieve some short-term savings, but as the scheme is only funded for three years, its ability to uh, provide value for money long-term and sustainable policing of our parks beyond 2014 is entirely questionable. This month's Bright Side, um, which I've already referred to, um, proclaims that people choose to live in Wandsworth because it's a great place to live, providing top quality public services. Wandsworth is a great place to live, and one of the reasons it is so is because, especially uh, loved by families, are the plethora of parks and open spaces, which are currently some of the safest in our city. Madam Mayor, fellow councillors, with the best will in the world, this plan for 12 Met Police officers and five event support officers, backed up by some um, additional temporary staff, um, coming in and out with the ebb and flow of work cannot hope to match the level of service currently provided across our commons and open spaces uh, by the 23 strong parks police team um, and indeed there has been some controversy about the claim in Brightside uh, a number of people uh, not my words but describing um, the, the quote in there as lies um, to say how can the new number be uh, larger than the, the team of 23 uh, and I'm sure the Cabinet Member will uh, address that in, in his remarks. The Met Police and the Parts Police provide two entirely different services. The role of the Met is to deliver a high-profile crime-fighting service across the whole of London. Are these really the type of officers that we need in our parks? How much are they going to enjoy ticking people off for riding their bikes along paths, um, talking to people um, about stealing duck eggs, or all the other kinds of things that go on in our parks? Really, you know, and there is a level of sickness amongst metropolitan police officers um, that makes uh, Councillor Cook's statements um, about the level of patrolling officers somewhat dubious in and of itself. Our parks police, many of whom have served for very, very many years, are a local service. They're friendly, they're helpful, they're approachable. Uh, their, ro their role is to provide reassurance, light touch policing, tackle that level of nuisance and to create the kind of environment where the public can enjoy our open spaces. And I hope you would all agree that they have done that extremely well for the last 26 years. But it is an entirely different type of service to that provided by the Met. Now worryingly, this uh, buy one get one free offer also includes a three-headed management structure. No HR strategist in their right mind would set out to create such a complicated line management structure uh, with all three teams reporting to different line managers across the council and into the Met. And with a plan underway to contract out uh, the locking and unlocking of parks, the spectre is raised of yet another management structure being added in. It becomes hard to believe that this scheme will end up providing, being either cost-effective or, in the long run, delivering the kind of good quality service 
um, that, that we have come to expect. So how did we actually get to this point where we're looking at the Bogoff offer? Just to recap, in 2011, in the January meeting of the Environment, Culture and Community Safety Committee, we took a report that proposed the reduction in numbers of the Parks Police. And Councillor Boswell and I voted in favour of that. We voted in favour of some restructuring. Uh, it's not that we are intrinsically against the idea of reducing the number of staff, changing their shift patterns, or anything of the sort. Uh, and at the time I moved, and I think it was Councillor Jacob at the time who seconded, uh, a move to look further at the locking and unlocking of the parks. So it was something that all councillors on the committee were interested in looking to improve the service, but not by necessarily increasing numbers. So it was quite a surprise when a report then came back to the April meeting suggesting that we then started looking at reducing the service, but not down to the levels that are now being proposed. It was a completely different number and an entirely different uh, type of service that was being uh, looked at in that paper. And originally the paper, the final paper with the proposals was due to come to the June meeting, then it was supposed to come to September, and in the end it finally emerged on the 26th of October and it came to the 9th of November meeting. Now it was after that that I moved the, uh, the reference up of the, 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 uh, the proposal to, to this meeting because I do think it's important that we make sure, you know, they are very large parts of this borough, very wide open spaces and much loved by our residents. And I do think, you know, so many of us have, you know, I have parts of Tooting Common fall into the first down ward, um, you know, ones with common ward clearly has ones with common in it, and so on and so forth. So many of us have wards that either neighbour the parks or the open spaces, or we have parts of the parks and open spaces in our wards. So really, producing a paper on the 26th of October to go to a committee on the 9th of November that went out to some community groups but not to widespread consultation. Could that really be described as adequate consultation? And I think the answer from the members of the public, whatever officers may have said at the meeting of, oh, it's not really mu that much of a change to the service delivery, whatever you might think, clearly from members of the public, they are saying, no, that's not long enough for the consultation. Listening to the community, which is a big part now of the Localism Act, not even a bill anymore, and with, the, with uh, the members of the public now having the right to challenge, you know, we do need to start listening much more thoroughly to people in our community. Why did the paper only bring forward one option? I mean, this evening, amongst the paperwork, uh, the piles of paperwork that we have before us, is actually a proposal from the parts police themselves with greater savings. The motion before, that I've moved this evening, and Councillor Boswell has seconded, is saying let's look at some other options that I think will provide better value for money and here is one immediately that has come forward this week even before we're meeting tonight. There would be other options as well. We don't need to look at anything more expensive. We can reduce our costs. There's no need to rush towards the buy one get one free offer as the only option on the table like a rabbit caught in the headlamps. We, we can and should look at other options. We should listen to the thousands of people who've been signing petitions and getting in touch. We don't want the wrong people, the wrong police, in the wrong roles, doing the wrong kind of job. Now, much has been made of the increase in patrolling staff, and I am looking forward to listening to Councillor Cook's explanation of that. But I don't see how that's going to happen, and I certainly don't see that the five events officers are going to be going out on patrol, not if they're really going to be fulfilling what we're looking for from them, which is to make sure that the income that we derive from activities in our open spaces continues. And I finally, I just want to make one other point, I do, and I did make this earlier. I do think it's, it's really quite naughty to put something into Brightside, undermining the constitution of this council. So I really do hope this evening that we do vote to have some more consultation, to look at some other options that could be much cheaper, that wouldn't involve such large redundancy costs. And I commend our motion to this council, and I hope you all vote in favour of it. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Cooper. Councillor Cook. Thank you, uh, Madam Mayor. Um, I'd like to invite members, if I may, um, to cast their minds back uh, to the late 1970s, those of us who, who are able to do so, um, to, uh, to the state of our commons and uh, public spaces in Battersea Park, um, 
Many of them were rather forbidding places, uh, considered unsafe, and Battersea Park in particular um, was, uh, was a real call, cause for concern. A legacy of the days uh, before Wandsworth gained control of uh, Battersea Park from, uh, from the GLC. Um, our commons, open spaces, uh, and Battersea Park in particular, are virtually unrecognisable uh, from that state of affairs. Um, and uh, it's, as Councillor Cooper rightly points out, uh, often uh, cited as a reason uh, for wanting to live in Wandsworth, the, uh, the very attractive uh, um, places that they are now. And the Parks Police have, police have played a, a huge part uh, in achieving that, uh, that state of affairs. And I would like to very clearly thank them on behalf of all residents of the borough for the work they've done in the 26 years uh, that they've been operating since 1985. Um, but times change. Uh, one only has to look at the, uh, the Labour Party's uh, change of heart. Uh, they vehemently opposed the creation of the Parks Police back then. Look how things change. Um, we are under unprecedented budgetary pressures uh, and we have a duty to constantly examine uh, what is the best, the most efficient uh, use of our resources on behalf of our residents. So when we saw the possibility of providing a comparable service at much lower cost, we had a clear duty to examine it uh, in detail. And that is what we have done in a very uh, methodical way over many months. Um, we've examined all the elements of the Parks Police role uh, and how these might fit with the MPS offer uh, and the capabilities of other council departments. So we now have a situation where the majority of current duties will be retained through the new Safer Parks team made up of 12 uh, MPS sergeants and constables working with the events team of five uh, drawn from the current service. Some duties will be reassigned to other council departments uh, according to need, cost, resource availability. Some activities we will cease. And overall we will provide a very similar level of service uh, and in some key respects an improved service. Uh, the MPS constables will have full powers. They will have instant access to the full resources of the MPS and taken together with the event team they will provide an overall resource of 17 uh, full-time equivalent compared to the current 15.2 uh, and this will over the three years commencing in April 2012 save this council over £900,000. Uh, I think that is a remarkable outcome in the current climate. If I may just return to the numbers, uh, and many members I'm sure will have seen the email exchange early on uh, this evening, I think it's a pretty straightforward uh, business. 17 is a bigger number than 15.2. We have consulted widely. We've spoken to many user groups uh, in several stages and officers have met and corresponded in, in great detail and I myself have met many of them. Um, their concerns have been exactly those that we too uh, identified as being critical to the success of this scheme. Um, we understand those concerns therefore and I have responded wherever I can. Uh, I'm pleased to say that almost all of the borough's user groups have been friendly uh, and supportive to some degree. Um, and I very much hope that those group, groups who remain unreconciled to the changes will be able to work with us, if they, as they have done so, so successfully uh, in recent years, for the benefit of all our open spaces. Uh, and I would urge them to recognize, as, as their fellow groups have done, that change is not always a bad thing. Um, if I may sort of direct some comments to some of the criticism that, uh, that has um, been made about this, uh, this proposal. I, I have to say I do uh, very much uh, warmly welcome the uh, party opposite's uh, newfound interest and fascination with uh, long-term budget planning. Um, I, I have to say it's a great shame for all of us that uh, they didn't perceive its significance uh, when their party was running the country. But, uh, they, uh, they complain in particular that the, uh, the contract will only run for three years. Well, in these extraordinary financial times when uh, the Governor of the Bank of England uh, frankly admits that he doesn't know what's going to be happening tomorrow, let alone next week. I think a three-year three, uh, uh, funding uh, arrangement is about as good as anyone can expect. Um, nonetheless, we have looked very carefully at may, where we may be in three years' time, and we have a number of options already clearly emerging. So we have given as much thought as I think we can reasonably be expected to do at this, this point. Um, there's been criticism of the contact, concept of a contract with the, with the Met, uh, which I, I do not accept. We have an extremely strong relationship with them. Uh, why else would we uh, have the lowest uh, inner London crime figures in all of London? Um, and I have every confidence um, that they will be able to, um, to deal with uh, anything that ones with parks and open spaces can, can throw at them.
Uh, and I find the, the, the suggestion that they won't be able to uh, faintly ridiculous. Um, in, in June, Labour criticised our approach for being too slow. We were told that we ought to get on and make a decision. Um, and now we're being told that we haven't looked at all of the options uh, and we ought to defer. I mean, really, they are all over the place. They, they are rather like a, a... They've been dashing around, changing direction, and they really are rather like a, a Battersea Park squirrel. Um, I, I, would, I would also... <laughs> I would also like to comment on the claim you know, in a bit more detail that we haven't looked at all the options because we have. We've been extremely thorough um, and indeed the Parks Police themselves would have been uh, very welcome to put forward proposals at any time. Um, and I must say I found it a little frustrating that at 10 to 5 uh, yesterday afternoon um, we had a proposal. Um, it really terribly late. I mean June would have been preferable uh, to less than 24 hours notice really. Um, regarding the detail of that proposal, uh, I'm afraid the numbers just don't add up. Uh, a number of key elements of the service have been left out. Um, it not only would not provide the service, but it also wouldn't provide the saving. Uh, and, well, we haven't even had time to discuss it because it's arrived so late in the day. Um, very few organisations look the same uh, as they did in 1985. Possible exception of the benches opposite, uh, obviously. Um, <laughs> and things change. And I see this as a natural evolution um, next step in the absolute paramount importance of keeping our open spaces, our parks, and Battersea Park in particular, um, as safe as they possibly can be for our residents. That is hugely important, uh, and no one needs to tell me about that. Um, and I, I am very encouraged by the clear support that we've had from so many user groups uh, around the borough. Um, Madam Mayor, I would like to reiterate, I, as I said, I, I do very much hope that everyone will come on board. Uh, very much hope that will be the case. Um, Madam Mayor, in concluding, I'd like to reiterate very clearly my thanks to the Parks Police. Um, I think we all owe them a great debt. Uh, and I have no hesitation in recommending these new arrangements uh, as, as a means of keeping our parks uh, and open spaces safe. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you Councillor Cook. The matter now before the Council is a reference up amendment proposed by Councillor Boswell and seconded by Councillor Cooper. I think it was the other way around, wasn't it? Yes. <laughs> proposed by Councillor Cooper and seconded by Councillor Boswell in respect of the paragraph 3 of the executive report concerning the Parks Police Service. Please indicate by a show of hands that those for the amendment. Twelve. Those against the amendment? Forty-one against. Any abstentions? The result of the voting for the amendment is 12-4 against 41. I now go to the original motion. Can I reverse the figures? Agreed. The figures are reversed. Now then. <laughs> Councillor Jacobs. Uh, Madam Mayor, in view of the lateness of the hour and, uh, in fact, the rather one-sided line-up of the next debate, uh, can I just we expedite the remaining business of the Council understanding Order 38? Thank you. Right. In that case... Read. Read. Um, paragraph 13 is for information. Do, oh, Councillor Ellis, do you want to put them forward? Uh, Madam Mayor, paragraph 13 is for information. Agreed. No. Noted. You're abstaining. It's the same figures, but the abstentions. Thank you. Now have it happened. Thank you. That's very honest. Thank you. Um, now we'll continue with executive report number one, adult care and health though I seek. Councillor Madden. Thank you Madam Mayor. Paragraphs one and two for adoption. Read. Yes, paragraph two, same figures. Thank you. But paragraph one, we, we all agreed. Thank you. Environment, culture and community safety I see Councillor Cook. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Paragraph for adoption. 
for adoption of information. For information, Madam Mayor, forgive me. Right. Do we all agree? You, you agree, Councillor Osborne? Yeah, thank you. Education, Children's Services, Sir C. Councillor Mrs. Tracy. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Paragraphs 5, 7, 8, and 9 are for information. Agreed. No, Councillor Daly, what um, figures? You're going to say for now, the same figures as before? Abstaining on nine, against eight, and sorry about five and seven accepting for information. Yeah, thank you. Strategic planning and transportation, OSC, Councillor King. Uh, paragraph 10 and paragraph 11 for information. Agreed. Agreed. Um, housing, OSC, Councillor Ellis. Uh, Madam Mayor, paragraph 12 is for information. Same figures. Thank you. Paragraph, Par four, paragraph 14 is for information. Same figures. Thank you. Finance and Corporate Resources, OSC, Councillor Senior. Uh, thank you, Madam Mayor. Uh, paragraph 15 is for information. Uh, paragraph 16 has already been dealt with. Paragraph 17 and 18 are also for information. Thank you. Regulatory Licensing Committee Report Number 2, Councillor Martin Johnson. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Paragraph 1 and Paragraph 2 are for information. Great, Great thank you. Licensing yeah. Committee Report Number 3, Councillor Martin Johnson. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Paragraph 1 and 2 are for information. Great. Thank you. Planning Applications Committee Report Number 4, Councillor Cuff. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Paragraphs 1 and 3 are for information. Great, Great thank you. Travel Purposes Committee Report Number 5, Councillor Morritt. Uh, thank you, Madam Mayor. Paragraph 2 is for information. Do you agree? Yeah. Thank you. Pensions Committee Report Number 6, Councillor Senior. I think you're doing that, Councillor. Uh, thank you, Madam Mayor. Paragraph 4 is for information. Thank you. Well, thank you, Councillors. That concludes the business for tonight's meeting.